Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Hi, welcome to our midweek service. We thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we are going to be teaching out of Pastor Walter's Laws of Increase Volume 2 manual on seed time and harvest. Uh, he asked us to start teaching out of this to renew our faith for prosperity and what God's promised to us, what's available to us, so that we can be ready and have our faith always at a place where we're ready to receive. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up a prayer. Amen. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we thank you, Father, that as we study your word, as we glean through your word, Father, that, Lord, it brings revelation, insight, and knowledge concerning your ways of operation. We thank you, Father, for this faith that stirred in us as we study your word, and we will be quick to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're starting with chapter one of uh, Laws of Increase, volume two, Seed Time and Harvest. Um, this is Understanding Seed Time and Harvest. Spiritual Laws of Seed Time and Harvest is this first section we're going to talk, talk about. We're going to start with Genesis chapter 8, verse 28. It says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. God has set in motion a spiritual law for the believer concerning prosperity. It is revealed in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22 as seed time and harvest, which we just read. When we have an understanding of the spiritual law, we can know how God works and how he wants to bless us abundantly, which is exactly what Pastor Walter was talking to me about today when he wanted us to start this um, uh, teaching on uh, the principles of prosperity so that we can understand that he wants to bless us and how he wants to bless us. Mm -hmm. So God uses the principle of sowing to get blessings over to us so our needs will be met. And then some, not just having enough to meet your needs, but more than enough so that you have some left over, so that you're ready for the next time you have a need. Mm -hmm. uh, though the spiritual laws of seed time and harvest are not the same as the natural laws of seed time and harvest, they do mirror each other. There's a natural study that best explains and helps us maximize the laws of seed time and harvest. It is called the science of agriculture, which characterizes the way spiritual laws operate. You're very familiar with agriculture in the town mm -hmm. you grew up in, but there will always be a planting time there will always be a growing time and there will always be a harvest and just like in the natural if you don't plant the seed water the seed mm -hmm. it won't grow and if you don't harvest this harvest the seed it'll die on the vine right right yeah if, if christians struggle i think in the largest area in the concept of of sowing and reaping is is that you're giving mm -hmm. that you're taking what you have and you're sacrificing for today you're tightening the belt for today and you're, you're taking that money and you're giving that money away. You're sowing that. This isn't the tithe. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's the equivalent <clears throat> of sowing and planting a seed right. is the giving. And, and a farmer doesn't look at seed when he puts seed in the ground. He doesn't, he doesn't sow hopelessly. Like he doesn't yeah, look at that not, and go, oh my goodness, now gone. we don't have, we spent all this money on the seed and now we don't have the money and what are we going to do? Right. No, they sow in hope because they know that that's going to produce a return right and so in the same way God is giving us these examples he's given us these principles to to be able to understand that when you give financially you don't do that from a, a hopeless standpoint you do it you sow in hope because you know the Bible principles and what we're going to go through is, is going to stir our faith in this of that when we give financially when we have a financial need the best thing we can do is not save mm-hmm the best thing we can do is sow. Saving will never produce an increase for you. The only way that you increase is by sowing. It's mm -hmm. by giving away, which is contrary, it's reverse to what the natural mind thinks. The natural mind thinks, well, I'll save a little this week, I'll save a little next week, I'll save a little the week after, mm -hmm. and we'll just keep saving and saving and saving until we get to the point where we have enough to go do that thing. Mm -hmm. But from a spiritual standpoint, when you sow, you're giving away that money and then that money is working for you and it's growing up and you don't have to know how, you just know that it's coming up as, as a harvest that then you put in the sickle and you, you call that in. Well, that's because it's a law. There's a law that governs that sowing and reaping, mm -hmm. the sowing and growing, just like in the, the science of agriculture. Yeah. Once you plant a seed, 
if you water it, it will grow. Right. And so when you plant a seed of giving, if you water it, cultivate it, and don't speak against it, don't 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 uh, hurt your seed. Right. It will grow. Yeah. And these are spiritual laws yeah. that that they override. They're spiritual laws that override natural law when put into practice. Mm -hmm. And when you don't put them into practice, they don't work. Mm -hmm. So it's it. This isn't for. This isn't a command. This isn't a demand. This isn't. You know, we're going to talk about the heart of giving. We're not. We're not asking people to do this. We're just presenting. This is the law. This is the principle. This is how. This is how increase can come in your life if you choose to step out mm -hmm. and obey the word. Yeah. So these are the similarities between the natural and spiritual laws of seed time and harvest. We're going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 10 in the Amplified, and then we're going to break down those verses and go through each of them as we go through this study. Do you want me to read all of it? Or? Yeah, go ahead and read it all okay. together, and then we'll break it down. So uh, in verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, it says, Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly, and he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessing. Let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, he prizes above other things, and he's unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Verse 8 says, And God is able <laughs> to make all grace and every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support, and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Verse 9 says, that it is written, He, the benevolent person, scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever. Mm -hmm. And God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for the eating, will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness, which manifests itself in active goodness, kindness, and charity. So notice Paul is using agricultural terms of seed time and harvest to discuss giving, mm -hmm. like you were talking about earlier. This is not... Uh, we're not talking about planting your own food. We're talking about actually giving money. Right. Uh, he says in verse 6, He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will reap sparingly and grudgingly, and he who sows generously will reap generously. There are many people I can picture who have, uh, who have happy, generous hearts yeah. that love to give, and you can see it all over their face. Yeah. And then there are people who you can tell it's a struggle for them, mm -hmm. and you can tell in their life that they also reap sparingly because they have a hard time yeah. in their giving. Yeah. Um, the, the definition for grudgingly is, the definition is displaying or reflecting reluctance or unwillingness. So mm -hmm. when you're displaying or you're reflecting that, people see that. Mm -hmm. So when someone asks you, you know, if you ask your kids to do something, you're like, hey, can you take out the trash? Mm -hmm. You can see when they're grudgingly responding. Right, and it's not about the amount. You could tell it's about uh, what their heart has purpose right. to do. Right, sparingly is stingily. Mm -hmm. And I love this, I love saying this, that stingy giving leads to stingy living mm -hmm. like the stinginess is this is the definition so this isn't me this is just reading out of i believe webster's it says unwilling stingily unwilling to share or give it suggested a small-minded ignoble <laughs> petty stinginess leading to miserable cheerless living so stingy giving leads to miserable cheerless living isn't that good? That is good. Yeah, it's all over their face. And so it, it's not it's not the number. Like, you can have a little, but give a lot. Right, like the woman with two mites. Right. You, 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 you give out of what you have, but Correct. you also, you have to have the right attitude. And that's, that's what right. this is addressing. And so, like, when you, uh, when you have a little and you hold everything back, that's sparing. You're not going to ever right. make. When you have a little and you give as much as you can, out of the generosity of your heart that's abundant that's right it's in a it's in a ratio of what is in your hand what do you have to give mm -hmm. and in isaiah 119 says if you be willing and obedient 
it's not enough just to give out of obedience. Mm -hmm. It's giving, the heart behind the giving mm -hmm. is the willingness. And that's what God receives. God, we don't send money up to heaven. Like there's not an address where we write a check mm -hmm. and say, to heaven, you know, streets paved with gold, mm -hmm. heaven, you know, galaxy, and then a weird zip code, <laughs> right? So God isn't receiving our money. Man receives our money. Right. God receives our heart. Yeah. God receives the, the willingness for what he receives the cheerful joyous prop to do at giving. Right. So if you plant sparingly, <clears throat> your harvest will be small, but if you plant generously, your harvest will be great. This mm -hmm. is both a natural and spiritual law and reveals some aspects of, this, of the spiritual laws of seed time and harvest. Your giving sets spiritual laws in motion, which produces a harvest. You're setting, you're setting something in motion that can't help but work because it's a law, just like uh, gravity. If you, if you drop a ball, you've set that law in motion and yeah. the ball will drop. When you sow with the right attitude mm -hmm. and generously, then right. you're setting the spiritual laws of seed time and harvest in motion. Yeah. Uh, so the farmer who sows a little can only expect to receive a little. It's the same with the Christian who gives a little. He will only be able to expect a little. He will not be able to expect a lot from a little bit of giving. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way in the natural or in the spiritual. Yeah. You know, I like what Ecclesiastes 11 says. It says, it says, cast your bread upon the water and you'll find it after many days. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've talked about, you know, what that, what that means. And it basically was like when the, when the banks of these rivers would swell during the rainy season, then as those waters would start to recede, they would cast seed out because it would be hitting that really fertile soil. Mm -hmm. And as the water would recede, they'd have this really fertile soil that would produce a harvest. And so the concept of cast your bread upon the waters, you'll find it after many days, is you're, you're putting it out where that water's receding and then it's going to produce for you. Mm -hmm. And verse two says, give a portion to seven. Yes, even, you know, bump it up to eight mm -hmm. because you don't know, it says, well, you don't know what evil will become on the earth. The clouds are full of rain. They empty themselves. That's natural law. When you see rain clouds, we all say it's going to rain, except here in Arizona. We're like, those are just clouds. And then if a tree falls towards the south or the north, like you said, gravity, where a tree falls, that's where it lays. Mm -hmm. That's gravity. So he's, he's lining up these natural laws, these natural principles to come in line with these spiritual principles of giving. In mm -hmm. verse four, it says, he who observes the wind and waits for all the conditions to be favorable will not sow. Mm -hmm. This is so key, because if you just wait for when your bank account says, yeah, now's a good time to give away money, it will never say that. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you wait for your head to think, well, yeah, now's a good time, it will never agree with that. Mm -hmm. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. Um, and then he goes on, uh, verse 6 says, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening withhold not your hand. For you know not which will prosper, whether this will, or whether that will, or whether both will be alike and good. But the, the concept is, get your seed in the ground, mm -hmm. because your seed will produce. And if mm -hmm. you're going to give seven, hey, bump it up to eight. Why? Because increase is in the ratio of what you have. From, from what you put in the ground, not mm -hmm. compared to what your buddy has or what your neighbor has or what your friend has and what they're giving, because you could give less like the widow with, that gave the two, two mites. Mm -hmm. You could give less, but actually be giving more. Right, and it's, so it's about that heart, that, stingy, that sparingly stingy attitude. So yeah. the word sparingly means stingily or a little. It is connected to certain motivations and moods that are governed by fear or even pride. And so your fear is gonna tell you, yo, I don't have enough, I can't give today. Right. Or even pride, like that's my money, I earned it, I worked hard, Ooh. why would I put it in the ground? Yeah. Uh, why would I give it to someone who hasn't earned it? Yeah. That's, that's not, that's sparingly, that's, yeah. that's, that's hurting your harvest, that's hurting First your Timothy increase. 6 says, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're trusting in your riches, when you're trusting in your money, when you go and look at your bank account and go, wow, look what I did. Mm -hmm. That's high-mindedness. Because it's God who gives seed to the sower and bread mm -hmm. for the eating. It's God who will bless the work of your hands. It's God who teaches you to prosper. Mm -hmm. So all glory goes to God. So when you start looking at your money thinking, look what I did, mm -hmm. your heart's wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and the problem is when you look at that and go, look what I did, then it's really hard to let go of that. 
because right. you start to trust in that money. You start to trust in what your bank account says mm -hmm. instead of trusting in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Yeah. So this word sparingly describes those who have the resources to give but cannot bring themselves to release them. If someone plants or sows bountifully, he will also reap an abundant harvest. So uh, if uh, the word, uh, now we're going to talk about the word abundantly. The word abundantly means a lot more than enough. Abundant giving starts in the heart of man. Mm. It's the motivation behind what you're giving. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you're not... Uh, someone who makes sixty thousand a year, they may give more than someone who makes a thousand or not a million dollars a year, right. uh, because because they give, like you said, it's the ratio. Their uh, their heart is in their giving. They're That's ready. Right. They're willing. They want to give, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to reap a bigger harvest. So That's in right. James chapter one verse five, the Greek word for liberally is haplos. Sure. It comes from the Greek word haplotes. It means generosity. Uh, we're going to read that right now. James one five. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. So that, again, that liberally means generosity. So we're talking about God giving liberally to you. This word is associated with a person's thoughts, feelings, character, and inner convictions. It reveals the inner reflections of the heart. The Greek word haplotes is also the same as bountifulness and liberal in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 11, and 13. And we'll read those two verses right now. Mm -hmm. It says, Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Verse 13, sorry. While the experiment, uh, while the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. So the conclusion then is abundant giving is a matter of the heart. It is a matter of our thoughts yielding to our convictions. Abundant giving is a reflection of the heart and it produces more than you can use and more than you need. God wants to prosper you bountifully because mm -hmm. he has set other things or because he has other things for you to do that are more important than only taking care of yourself and being concerned about how you will make ends meet. That right. is so true. Like if you're only concerned about yourself and how you're going to pay your bills, how are you ever going to help someone else? How are right. you ever going to God has more planned for you right. than yourself. The plan, yeah, and the plan of God is so big. Mm -hmm. I like what I think it was Reverend Joel Siegel. He's like you're not going to break God. It just seems like everybody's worried about asking too much. I don't know that I've ever worried about that. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, you know, so the concern comes in. It's like, well, I don't know if God can handle this desire. I guess maybe that's a fear. Like, yeah, they're, they're afraid that God won't do it for them. Right. And so then they have to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to break God. Like, God desires. Like, we, we talked about that God didn't spare Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if you go and give away all the money in your bank account. Let's be extreme. You go and give away all the money in your bank account. God's not broke. God has, it's his grace, it's his favor, it's ability, it's all of heaven's influence working in and through you to cause all that increase to come in your life. So God is constantly, God is trying to bless us more than we can ever imagine, mm -hmm. more than we could ever think or imagine. So when we realize the magnitude of God and his character, that's why we talk about that God is a liberal God, because we're talking about his, his character. He gives you liberally. Mean liberally giving. He gives liberally. God is, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. Yeah. Like that's God's character. God isn't withholding anything, right? I'm not talking liberal and conservative. Don't get all political and think that. Don't go Anyways, stay, going. stay with the word, <laughs> stay with the word. Don't go red and blue on me. So God is, that's God's character. And so to think like, well, if I give this away and now poverty, lack, all these things are going to come in, we're not taking into account God's character. Mm -hmm. We're not taking into account who he is and the power that, that flows through his grace and his ability. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, so we're going to talk about the heart of giving. Now is where we're going to break down 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to start with verse 7 this time and go through uh, a couple of the verses through that we just read at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 7 says, Let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart, 
not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, he prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt-to-do-it giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. So the phrase, let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart is in reference to giving, whether sparingly or abundantly, what we talked about earlier. Here is the transition into spiritual matters. God is now trying to get you to see what will prosper you. This is what will prosper you, the spiritual matters. By using allegories of sowing and reaping, he helps us understand spiritual things and how they work. He is saying that sowing is giving which is not lending or borrowing. Right. You know, when uh, uh, someone calls you and asks you to borrow money, you can just give it to them. Right. You don't need to ask, you don't need to expect it back. In fact, you just say, this is my seed to you. Yeah. May God bless you abundantly. Mm -hmm. uh, may God take care of all your needs. You yeah. Know, you don't, if, if that's on your heart to right. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when people struggle with money, they will struggle with giving. If you quit struggling with giving, then you'll prosper. Yeah. The struggle is what pollutes your seed. When you struggle within your heart, you're now polluting your seed, which is going to choke it out and not allow it to, to grow. He is talking about the sower here, the one whose heart is in his mm -hmm. or her sowing. Yeah. He is saying this sower is a in a spiritual sense is operating under spiritual laws mm -hmm. and sometimes when a person's heart isn't right he or she will begin looking for loopholes to try to get out of sowing or giving yeah check your heart if that's what you're doing if you're constantly thinking you know how do i get out of this right. obviously your heart's not in the giving right and two if you're if you're having to give under compulsion mm -hmm. don't give mm -hmm. like that's that's one of the things like like debbie's always like yeah your heart's to help people but you're not obligated to help everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's good for me because things will draw on my heartstrings and because I'm a giver, I want to help the people, you know, help that individual. And Debbie's like, that's not, you know, you still follow your heart. So you've helped me in that area where mm -hmm. like people will take advantage of me mm -hmm. because, I'm, because I'm like, yeah, I can help. And Debbie's like, no, like they're taking advantage of you. So the other side of it is when, I think we're really cautious when we do offering time and we take up offering like it's not done to put people under you're compulsion. You're talking about from the pulpit you're saying. That's right. You're never compelling people. That's to right. A, a minister should never give up and say you know, say something that puts pressure on the people to force them to have to give. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. That's that's not accurate teaching. Like like you just get up, you encourage people in their faith people give what they're going to give what they purpose in their heart and then you move on right so if you're being put under compulsion like you have to give this certain amount and you have to give it in the next 60 seconds or you know god's not going to bless you well that's under compulsion and that's wrong and that that shouldn't be done mm -hmm. so there there are a lot of people that abuse scripture to try to to try to fleece the people and they're mm -hmm. trying to they're stealing from god's people that's wrong that's not the purpose of what paul was writing this for mm -hmm. So I'm going to read this statement one more time just because it goes with the next thing. Uh, sometimes when a person's heart isn't right, he or she will begin looking for loopholes to try to get out of sowing or giving. They'll sell, say things like, well, my heart has to be in it. So that's their loophole. Well, since my heart's not in it, I'm going to, I don't have to give because that's, you know, that's not the right kind of giving. But verse six has already stated that if we sow sparingly, we will reap sparingly. And if we sow abundantly, we will reap abundantly. That stays the same. It is unchangeable we've got a crazy dog so if you want to get, <coughs> stop if you want to get a little back from that little that you sowed then your heart has to be right if you want to get a lot back from the abundance that you sowed then your heart still has to be right in your giving god wants to prosper you if there's or is there a prejudice concerning the word and what you are willing to believe or can you just look at the word at face value and say, I believe it. Mm, that's good. If someone says the word doesn't work, then either that person is lying or God is lying. And we know which one it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> God is not a liar. Our seed might be in the ground germinating or getting ready to pop up. But sometimes we pour gasoline on our seed instead of water by our doubt and unbelief. You're going to mm -hmm. choke that seed out and it won't produce mm -hmm. anything for you. You see, you have to have faith in these spiritual laws. They don't just operate at will. You must have faith in them. So where is your faith at? 
You have to have, you have to believe. We believe the word of God, and so we obey the word. Disobedience is doubt and unbelief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, a lot of times the temptation comes in where you'll hear people say like, well, I, I tried that, mm -hmm. but it didn't work. Well, I gave to that ministry, but I never, I never reaped a harvest. You know, and, and I look at, I look at the, the old timers, you know, I look at the, 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 the men who are out there who have lived this life and sowed seed and are now multi, multi millionaires mm -hmm. and have their own jets to fly around wherever they want to go. Mm -hmm. See, when I'm, when I'm giving and, and a temptation tries to come in and say like, well, why isn't this working? I'm like, no, no, no. If it worked for them, if they started where we started and they sowed and sowed and reaped and reaped and sowed and sowed and reaped and they worked the principles, if it worked for them, it'll work for us. Mm -hmm. If they started where we're at, we'll end up finishing where they're at. Right. And so don't get discouraged by looking at a time and moment and thinking, well, I don't think my seed's working for me. No, like what Debbie was talking about, don't speak against your seed because the seed's coming up. The seed has to produce. Seed produces in the side of, of rock faces. Mm -hmm. I remember Pastor pointing out, we were, I think we were trimming his yard and he had weeds growing up in the cracks of the sidewalk. And he goes, see Dave, that's the power of the seed. Mm -hmm. And what is that? That a seed could take the smallest amount of dirt in concrete and still take root and start to produce. Right. That's the power of the seed. Mm -hmm. So never speak against your seed. When you put money in the ground, when you've given financially, speak to that thing and say, yeah, the harvest might not have come in yet, but it's coming. Right. I know it's coming. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, uh, um, I've heard this said, and I won't say where or why or when, but um, when you have seed in the ground, call in the harvest. Yeah. Because you can't, that's the way to reap it, is you that's call right. it in. Um, if, you, if you know that you've sowed seed and you have a harvest out there, then don't leave it. Yeah. Call it in. Yeah. And obviously, it will work. That's right. If you're constantly sowing, that means you constantly have seed coming up. That means you constantly have a harvest in the field. This dog. She just drooled on my foot. She drooled on my hand <laughs> and my knee. We're about to sew Sophie into... No, 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 no. She's we'll a, have a raffle. Anyone I, that wants her, please uh, give a thumbs up. No. It's all over my hand now. Ew, okay. I and think, my other hand. I think, we've, uh, I think we've reached our time, uh, mostly. And uh, we've got little little birds on the stairs now. Um, we love you guys. We appreciate you being with us and joining us. Uh, next week, if uh, if uh, Pastor is okay with it, we'll continue with verse eight in Second Corinthians chapter nine, and uh, and uh, go from there. We love you. Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848. If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.